Let's talk about different types of light sources. The first quality I'll look at is the distance or size of a light. Any light source emits light energy that we will think of as light rays. If that light source is close to an object, the cast shadow will be projected as a wide cone. If we move this light source away from the object, you can see how the cast shadow cone gets narrower. If we move that light source even further away, let's say as far as the sun, then the light rays are getting pretty much parallel to each other. This is an example of sunlight, and you can see the cast shadow shapes being the same on all the little forms. Here we have a small local light source. It is close to the object, and you can see all the cast shadows are going out and away from the position of the light source. Take a look at this. We have a light at an average distance, and then a light that is very close. See how the shape and the size of the cast shadow changes? Also notice the position of the terminator. Here the terminator is pretty much going around the equator of the ball. Here the terminator has shrunk. It's moved up closer to the light source. A small terminator leads to a bigger cast shadow. These two are connected. A related effect with small local light sources is that the light energy fades away with increasing distance. So you can see on these hands, the one that's right up against the light is the brightest. And the further away I move the hand, the weaker the light energy gets. Let's talk about light softness. If you have the sun shining, you get direct light. But if that sun is shining through a cloud layer, that cloud layer will diffuse and scatter the light. What do you think happens when you have so many light rays scattered in different directions? Here we have direct light, no clouds. And here we have a cloudy day where all the shadows are getting diffused and softened. We can do the same thing with an artificial light by adding a diffuser that will scatter and soften the light. So here is direct light, no diffusion, and here's a softbox light. Take a look at the cast shadow and the terminator as well. Here is before and after. It's a huge change. On the top again is a point light, just shining directly on the subject, and on the bottom we have a softbox. Compare the images on the right, particularly the cast shadows. Softboxes are often used in photography to light a subject in a more subtle, pleasing, less aggressive way. There are all kinds of sizes and shapes, but the effect is generally to soften the light. So on the left, there's a hard, unfiltered, direct light. And on the right, there's a light source that has been softened. One type of light is natural light, sunlight. This is very far away, so the light rays are parallel. Another type of light is often called a point source. This is a local light, like a lamp in a room or a candle, that is fairly close to the subject. A third type of light source is called an area light. This includes softboxes and windows through which indirect light is entering a room and that creates a very soft type of lighting. Here's an example of sunlight with parallel light rays casting a shadow on the floor. And here a point light that casts a shadow on the floor and on the back wall. You can see the light source projecting the cast shadow. Now if we move this point light, you can see the cast shadow moves as well. I want to invite you to imagine what happens if we add both of these point lights at the same time. What do you think happens to the cast shadow? Create a mental image of this, and maybe you can even draw it and pause the video for a second. 
Okay, I'm going to reveal in three, two, one. Here we go. So this is kind of interesting. We get two cast shadows, but each light source is illuminating part of the cast shadow of the other light source. And in the middle, we get an area where none of the two lights are actually reaching, where none of them are illuminating the wall or the floor. The entire room also got a little bit brighter because there are now two light sources instead of just one. Area lights work in a similar way. If you imagine an area light being a collection of many, many point light sources, each having their own light direction, it might start making sense why the cast shadow of an area light is so soft. Here are two different paintings. On the left is Bouguereau using soft light, and on the right we see Ribera using hard light, creating very dramatic lighting. A big part of the intensity here are also the dark shadows. That is because there's very little ambient light in this scene. We'll get into that in the next module.